What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of AC Zion's Garage and today I got a special treat for y'all. We're going to paint the engine for patches and we're not rattle canning it. Nope. We are base clearing this thing. This thing's going to be rad, red, and ready to go. And also, we're painting it in the Florida booth. Yep, we're painting outside. So I'm going to show you guys you can paint this stuff at home even if you don't have a shop. Just make sure you ain't got any neighbors really close by. So stay tuned. We're going to spray this bad boy. She's going to look like a million bucks. All right, here we go. Here's our candidate today. If you've uh, watched some of my past videos, I'll link it. This uh, 350 here was in the 72 chassis. We did a will it run on it. I'm gonna do a video on it. Uh, last week, we put a mother thumper cam in it. Me and dad did. I blasted the timing cover and the oil pan because it was all chunky and flaky. But where I've got it now, I just had the intake sitting on here. I'm gonna just line it up real good with the holes. And uh, that way I can always get this because I never know where the intake's going to end and I hate these little rusty spots. Got some old garbage valve covers on. We're just going to let it spray on that. Let's make sure we get under here real good. I got the harmonic balancer and stuff that I'm going to hang on the cherry picker out here and the water pump. But the way I've prepped this right here already, I just took a, a wire wheel and went over and just got the flaky junk off because this is just regular rattle can, probably VHT or something. Stuff's not bad, but it chalks up after a while, and we want a custom look on this thing. I told my dad the way I want this truck to look, because it's all patinaed up. I want it to look like an old pair of tennis shoes with a new shoe strings in it, and that's basically what the engine's going to be. It's going to be a bright red. We're going to have a polished Corvette valve covers on it, or i got a set of black fin Corvette valve covers I had decided. We're going to paint the intake and all this. I haven't covered up the car pole yet because i like to lay these spacers up here and i'll just make me a mark so i can tape it off because i just don't want this to look just that aluminum on there it just stands out the intake's gonna be bright red probably gonna do black uh bolts intake bolts or polished arps you guys drop down in the comments which y'all would rather see in it but yeah where i've got this thing prepped to right now i washed it down really good with lacquer thinner that's the problem with these old engines that's ran that just they're nasty. I'm going to wipe it one more time down with lacquer thinner. And I took a red scotch bride and lacquer thinner and just scrubbed the whole engine down, basically. And she's pretty clean. i got to get a little bit more of this down here. But the only problem is with this intake not bolted, we're not going to be able to flip it over. So I'm going to show you how we got to get, especially under here is going to be the worst part, trying to get it painted. So I'll show you how we do that, and we'll check it all real good and make sure it's covered. We're going to use a... PPG Omni epoxy is not the most expensive stuff, but that's going to be your ground like your base to build in your house The foundation has to be good or the rest is going to be garbage. So we're going to shoot it with a, a light gray epoxy Then I got some uh, Just old leftover stuff. So that's what we're painting with some old DBC red uh, PPG DBC red base coat And I'm gonna have to see what kind of clear I got in here. We got some clear leftover and stuff and uh We'll just do one or two cuts clear. The big trick to this stuff is don't let it build up a lot. Don't try to hog on a big thick coat because you're probably going to have trouble with it chipping a little when we put the bolts in. The best way to do this is to bolt it down and torque everything down and then paint it. But if you ever need to take the intake off for any reason, it's going to tear it up. But we're going to get the finish taping this thing up and uh, get ready to go. Guys, I'm going to show you how I trim my gaskets and stuff because i can't stand when you put these on especially if you're doing a painted intake if we was to tape up here at the mating surface you'd have this big white area all this is going to be bright red so i take my uh, little spacer here i just lay it on here and i'll just trim this up here i think the back's going to be okay i don't think i have to really yeah the back's all right and i'll trim the gasket because the gasket hangs over we'll get everything to fit good and that way everything will be red here and just just little extra details you guys can add to it makes a difference but we'll get the rails or blade and cut that off right there on that mark and uh get ready to wipe this thing off one last time get the squirting guys well there she is got her all taped up and ready to go like i said if we have a uh, any areas over here still show we can come back and touch it up the paint brush but i'm gonna give her a quick wipe down with a 
lacquer thinner and a rag and uh we'll do a quick halfway tape up on the stand i don't want to get a bunch of nasty overspray on everything but after we get that ready we'll get ready to break the epoxy out and i'll show you uh, all the liquids that i'm using and uh, how they mix and stuff it's pretty simple don't let the mixing and stuff i have a video on it i'll try to link it also on how to read a mixing cup and stuff like that it's not that hard you guys can do it but we're gonna get after it all right here's our liquids we're gonna be using this is the omni mp 171 it mixes uh two to one mp 175 hardener and now this stuff here is old it's probably old enough to vote i would say it's probably getting close to 20 years old and a lot of paint companies this is a chance i'm taking because i'm cheap but i got half a gallon of dcu 2002 and the dcx 61 hardener so uh we're gonna take a chance with it but i'd say it's just close to 20 years old this probably is too this is some deltron dbc 2000 that's the red we're going to use this is the base coat this is clear coat and this is the epoxy epoxy goes down first you let the epoxy tack really good where it's not sticky or anything then you just go straight on top of it with your base coat probably two light coats of this and uh probably two just wet enough so it ain't dry coats of this <clears throat> and we'll call it good but this is just some uh this is metal lux a uh, brand i used to use a lot this is regular old base coat thinner and uh, we're going to use it in the base this mix is one to one this mix is four one to one so this mix is four parts clear one part hardener to one part reducer so we'll use the same reducer in this as we mix this so this mix is one to one and four one to one and two to one so that's our old scrap stuff that we're getting rid of see we're being green here as green as i can bring myself to being but we're getting rid of waste instead of dumping it in the landfill we're gonna dump it on that small block chibole over there so i just got my welding table set up here i got my my old soda jet 95 and uh i'm gonna use that for the epoxy and then i'll get my welcome slim combat to shoot the basin clear i just primers and stuff i like to have a dedicated primer gun to it just because it eats the needles and seats and all that stuff up in it but all right guys we got her all taped up about as good as we're gonna get it i may put a little uh tape on my cylinder there so we don't get any paint on it and uh besides that i'm all done wiped everything off and uh we're gonna blow her down real quick start mixing paint start squirting her so one thing i'm gonna do is line it get these holes lined up good pretty centered that way it'll uh at least halfway look like it's supposed to been there because it'll put a little funky shadow line here but i think some of the gasket will cover it up so we got them pretty centered in the holes there i think we can call that good uh as for right now it's kind of overcast which is nice a lot of the bugs are not out the best time to paint outside i'm gonna say in most people's like oh i need to do it in the evenings but it's really in the 12 o'clock there's least amount of bugs here in north carolina anyway at 12. the hotter it is the better but then you it's a little harder to paint because your paint dries so quick so you got to run a slow reducer so Try high noon to paint this stuff, and uh, you'll have the best amount of luck without getting stuff. All right, guys, I'm gonna give you a quick overview, real quick, on these little uh, mixing cups, how to use them. Like I said, I got a video I'll link to it, it goes a little more in depth, and it's not as complicated as it looks. I mean, you look at this for the first time, you're gonna be like, wow, it's crazy. I don't know if I can do it. Pretty easy. I'm gonna show you here, real quick, on how to mix each one of these and uh, what the lines and numbers and all that stuff mean. So, let me get you spunked around, and uh, we'll get this thing mixed up the four one to one which would be your clear over here work with me by the way i got these off amazon i'll link these from my affiliate account these are a tcp global brand uh they're fairly reasonable anyway here's our four one to one that'll be your clear your four i always mix it like this it's fours are clear the second number will always be your hardener unless specified differently on your mixing cans and the one will be a reducer so this one, two, three, four, stuff like this, don't let this confuse. This is the amount of paint you're gonna do. So when you're mixing four to one, you're gonna say you're gonna do the least amount. You'll mix your clear up to the one and it'll be right here. And then you'll mix your, pour your hardener in up to the next one and then pour your reducer up to the next one. So that's gonna give you 
however much that is, that much paint. If you're not mixing a whole lot, it's going to give you a little bit. Same thing on the two. You go two, 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 three, 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 four, 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 five, five, five. That's how you do those. The one to one's pretty easy. You don't even really need a mixing cup. You can do it off of even just parts. You can do like on the one to one, you can do it here. You can do one to one, two to two, three to three, four to four, so forth, so on. Same equal amount. Or one to one's pretty easy because one to one don't really matter what it is. You can take a whole container of this of the color, which is a base coat, and then fill this same cup all the way back up to the same amount again with a reducer. That's one to one. So the container don't matter on one to one. You can do a a glass, a bowl. It don't matter as long as you use the same amount on each one. So one to one's well fairly easier. This here's two to one. Uh, this cup, yeah, it's got two to one. So there's your two to one. You mix it the same way. You'll do. You'll just fill it up to the one and the one. This is made for the different increments of it. It's two to one, so it's fairly easy. Now you can do. Two to one on ounces. So I'll show you real quick how to do two to one. This one gets eh, kind of complicated for my little pea brain, but anyways. So if you do four ounces, you take, you fill your, uh, so this will be your epoxy, two to one. You fill it up to your four ounces. You take half of four, which is two. So then you just pour your hardener up to the six. So it's the same way with the six. If you're going on up, you know, more and more and more and more of it. You go, you pour your uh, epoxy up to six ounce. What's half of six? Three, so six, seven, eight, nine. So you'll go up in between the 19. You just do, you just take half. You take whatever amount of epoxy you do to do two to one, you do half of it again to do your hardener. Hope I didn't confuse you too much. Like I said, it's more in depth on my video on how to mix paint and stuff, but just wanna share that with you real quick before we get out here mixing up and squirting this stuff. All right, guys, make sure you mix this stuff up thoroughly. We're gonna do the white just so the red, you know, you want your reds to pop. So it takes a lot more red to cover, like a black or something. So we're gonna do a white one. So I'm gonna fill it up real quick. I think we're gonna do a two, two, two and try that and see if that's enough. If not, we can mix more, but uh, I'm gonna get that mixed up real quick and we'll be ready to go. We're gonna do the three, three, three. I wanna make sure I got enough. So I'm gonna fill the first one. No, let's do two. Okay, I'll make my mind up a little bit. I just don't like a lot of waste. There's the two. Wipe this off. Hardener. We'll take the hardener up to the next two. And we'll try that. It don't get any reducer on this because this, this uh, epoxy's already pretty thin. So mix that real good. Get her put in the cup. All right, make sure you always strain your stuff. It don't matter how clean you think it is, strain it. Like I said, we've been mixing this. You want to incorporate this really good. You want to do light coats, this stuff will run. And uh, we're going to do light coats on it. And we just want to get it to right at a good consistent color of white. It don't have to be just plum bleached out white, but a good consistent color. That way it'll take less of the base coat to cover. So get this poured in here. We're going to go out here and turn this engine white. Make sure you're wearing PPE. Make sure you wear a respirator. Even though you're outside, just wear one of these things because this stuff's not good to go in your lungs. I got my old nasty glasses and my old nasty painting hat. It's got 12,000 miles on it. But the hardest part about painting this thing is going to be right up under here, guys, because it, it lips under. So we're going to get close and try to paint back this way. But I'm going to set the camera back so I'm not getting all in it. But that's going to be our hardest part. And I'm going to go around. I'll show you some of the spraying on the intake. Then I'm going to stick you on the wall. Y'all going to be a wall fly. Make sure you get up under the valve covers like that. Because if you pull it off, you're going to have a bare metal spot. If you don't get up under all the nooks and crannies.
All right, guys, that's basically how we're gonna spray. Just gonna try to get the Getting all the nooks and crannies and turn her white, and then we're gonna make her red. So hang out on the wall. Guys, there she is. Got a good, probably I'd say two light coats of uh, epoxy on her. Looking pretty good and covered. All nice and white. Didn't film the harmonic bouncer and the water pump, but same basic thing. Just good coated coverage white. We're going to try to minimal amount of a uh, base coat. We're going to let this tack a little bit till it don't stick to our fingers anymore. And we're going to shoot the DVC red base coat, probably two coats it, then we'll shoot clear and we'll be done. Super easy project, guys. You can do this and have a good quality product instead of just some old rattle can that's gonna fade out on you, so. All right, guys, same thing. You need to stir your base up really well and just make sure you get all the goodies that's settled in the bottom. Like I said, this is old paint. Sometimes on this really old stuff, I kind of leery of using it on like a whole car. I use this on the Volkswagen wheel, so I know it's good, but check out how bright red that is. She gonna be shiny. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and uh, mix this up. It's gonna be one to one. I'll mix the same way. But I think what I'm gonna do, guys, is just to show you that you don't need a bunch of different paint guns. I know some of you guys don't. I've been doing this for 20 some years, so I've got a collection of guns. But we're gonna shoot everything out of one gun. You just gotta clean it up. I just went up through there and cleaned that up really well. And uh, we're gonna mix this up real quick and uh, start shooting the pretty stuff. All right, guys, this is going to be the same process. I've got my fan pattern set up basically the same way. And uh, we're just going to run over this real quick. I'm going to show you up close about how much the first coat needs to be and then throw you on hyperlapse. So that's basically what you need to do. You're gonna see through it just a little bit. We're gonna come back with just a little bit more coat and cover that and then shoot clear. Guys, here's the second coat. Should be final coat. It's got good coverage. Just gonna look for any light spots and a hem, and then we're gonna go clear. And we're gonna be done with this. Uh, about 45 minutes. But that's about what it should take. About 45 minutes to an hour to do all this spraying and everything. A lot of it depends on the how hot it is, and how fast it dries. Let's get a spray. Guys. Here's the last round of stuff. We've got two coats of epoxy, two light coats of epoxy, two light coats of base. And now we're going to the DCU 2002. You can use any clear you want. This is just some junk I had laying around, which is pretty good junk to be laying around. But we're going to mix this up. It mixes four one to one. I'm going to do the uh, three. So it'll be three, three, three. Three on the clear hardener reducer. That should be enough to do us uh, two medium wet coats on here and that should be plenty we don't want to overdo it because we don't want to chip them down the road we'll put this goodness in here 
We'll take this one right here. Ah, uh, that's an awful lot of clear. Let's do, uh, we'll do two and a half, just to make it complicated. Just go in between the two and the three. We'll do a two and a half on this. This may be too much. We just don't want to waste this stuff because it's stupid expensive. We go up to about two and a half on that one. We'll splash more. And then the rest is reducer. I always make sure you wipe the lids of this hardener off too because that stuff will glue like super glue on there and you'll never get them off again. Alright, we'll reduce it two and a half. Reduce it two and a half. Maybe scotch over, she's ready to spray. Get her mixed up really good, put in the gun, and I'll see you outside in the Florida booth. At least that's what I call it. All right, guys, I'm going to do it like before. I already got my fan pattern set. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do. We're going to do like a, you know, you don't want to dry spray anything, but I'm going to show you how I'm going to do like the front, and then we'll just set a quick time lapse up for you and uh, get some of the beauty shots where she looks like plastic. So here we go. That's about the sheen you're gonna to want to get it. It's just a little bit shinier, but you don't want to run it anywhere because ain't like you can wet sand and buff a well you can if it was slick enough, but ain't like you can wet sand and buff the engine. So you can see right here how it's a little flat. Look how that gloss pops. Good gravy gonna make his $20 truck look like a Bentley or something. What well, I'm talking about. All right, I'm gonna stick y'all over here on the post so I can get my respirator on and save a couple more years on my life. All right, guys, there she is. Man, that thing's looking killer, ain't it? Look at that red. That is some bright red. Uh, help me decide i got some black corvette fin valve covers and we got some that could be polished just can't decide on i may next week do a video addressing it up putting the polished stainless uh, headers and stuff like that on it and uh but drop down the comments let me know so we'll figure out what we can put on it like i said i got the black finished corvette and the polished ones well they'll have to be polished but the color i think is coming out really good i think it's gonna look good on that blue truck or inside the blue yeah you guys can do this that base clear just steps it up a whole lot more than just that rattle can stuff like i said we've done it outside they got a little fly right here but it's gonna be behind the harmonic balancer i'll yank him out as soon as it tacks a little more harmonic balancer i think for sure gonna do all the pulleys black she's gonna look pretty good yes sir that thing I can't wait to start putting her together and put all the pretty stuff on it, but I'm going to stick y'all back up here again. We're going to do a quick second coat. Uh, the way I do this right here, come to your tape. See how it just is sticky like the backside of a piece of tape? That's when you know it's ready to second coat of clear. We're not going to drill it. We're just going to do a medium wet coat on it and call it a day. Right, guys hope y'all enjoyed this video on spraying this uh engine here for patches and i just wanted to show you guys you don't have to rely on the old rattle can shaky shake stuff to do your engine put some effort into it put the detail in it it'll really look a whole lot better especially when you pop that hood up and people's like wow i mean this thing turned out great i'm gonna probably do a video on dressing it up we're gonna do the valve the corvette valve covers and do a little uh arp polish bolts and stuff like that but we're gonna try to make this uh engine look like it come out of a hot rod and we're just putting it into this old pick em up truck so make sure you like subscribe and all that good stuff make sure you stay tuned guys we're gonna have our t-shirts out before long it's gonna be on www.acdesigns.com make sure you look out for that that design that ryan ford did is just bad to the bone 
all that being said, remember, be kind to one another. Jesus loves you, so do we. God bless. We gone.